today's lesson we will be solving problems involving areas of parallelograms, areas of triangles, and complex figures. Some formulas that you guys are already familiar with hopefully. Uh, first, the area of a parallelogram is equal to the base times the height. The base and the height have to be perpendicular segments. Perpendicular meaning that they intersect at right angles. We take the base, we multiply it by the height, and that's going to give you the area of the parallelogram. You'll notice that the base and the height here, so the height can be drawn outside of the figure, or the height can be drawn inside of the figure. But once again, the base and the height have to be perpendicular to each other. So here are some examples that we will start off with. First, finding the area of the parallelogram. I always want uh, my students to start by writing the formula. Area is equal to the base times the height. Area is going to be equal to the base which is 5 times the height which is 3. When we replace variables we use parentheses. We multiply 5 times 3 so the area is going to be equal to 15 and the units will always be squared units so the units would be square meters. We circle or box our answer, and that's what our work should look like. We write the formula, we show the substitution step, we write our answer in square units, we circle or box our answer. Sometimes you're going to have to find the area without a picture. You're given the base, you're given the height, so you would still write your formula. Area is equal to base times height. You show your substitution step, your base is 14. Your height is 5. Well, it's supposed to be a 5. You multiply 14 times 5, and the area is going to be equal to 70 square meters. We'll circle the box, that answer. We continue with the area of a triangle. <clears throat> Notice that we start with the area of the parallelogram, right? The first couple of examples we looked at. But if you split the parallelogram in half, you form two triangles. That's why the formula for the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. You take the base of the triangle, the height of the triangle, you multiply them together, but you take one half of that value because the area of the triangle is one half the area of the uh, parallelogram with the same base and height. So let's look at some examples. A conservation group plans to buy a triangular plot of land shown at the left. What's the area of the plot? We write our formula. Area is equal to one half. Base times the height. We replace our base with 30 and our height with 10. 30 times 10. So our area is going to be equal to 30 times 10 is 300. One half of that would be 150. The units would be square kilometers. Just like our last example, sometimes you will have to multiply or find the area without a picture. We still write the formula. Area is going to be equal to base times height. Our base is going to be 30. The height is going to be 17.3. We have to multiply 30 times 17.3. I'll do that over here. 17.3. I'm going to do times 3 and just add a 0. So that's going to be 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 7 is 21. Carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3 and 4 is 5. But we'll add a 0. So 17 times 30 would be 5,190. One decimal place. So it looks like it would be 519. Oh, but we did not take one half of that. All right, so let's do that. I wrote my formula incorrectly. It should be one half, one half, and one half of the 519. One half of 519 would be what? 200, let's see, 260, 259 and a half, I believe. Area is going to be equal to 259 and one half and those would be square meters circle or box that answer continue 
Sometimes we want to use the formulas for the area of a triangle and the area of a parallelogram to find the area of what's called a complex or compound figure. Compound figure is when we take uh, a figure that is composed of several other smaller figures. There are going to be situations where we will have to compose a figure, meaning join pieces together. Uh, to find the area or sometimes we will have to decompose which means to take a figure apart. Composing and decomposing figures into simpler shapes can sometimes help you find the total area of a polygon. If you take a look at this example Haley drew a diagram of her two sections of her garden find the total area. We have one section of our garden here to the left we have another section of her garden here to the right and if we wanted to, we could find the area of this triangular section here, find the area of this rectangular section, find the area of this triangular section, triangular section in this rectangle, and add all of that together. But if we're able to compose, meaning to join pieces together, makes the problem a much, much easier. So if I take this piece here, and I'm able to swing it around and join it here, I just create one large rectangle and one large rectangle which would have a base of 18 and a height of 8 right I would just multiply 18 times 8 to find the area of that rectangular uh, figure let's see what it would look like to decompose a figure to decompose a figure we actually want to take a figure apart and anytime my students decompose a figure I first want them to uh, label each one of the pieces that they're going to find the area for. So I like them to just write a one, a two, and a three just by numbering the areas that they're going to be finding. There are three distinct shapes here that create this entire figure and we will find the area of each one of those distinct shapes. So we start by writing area one which is equal to the length times the width because area one is a rectangle area 1 is going to be equal to a length of 2 and a width of 3 so that's going to be 2 times 3 area 1 is equal to 6 and those are square inches area 2 is also a rectangle so we'll use the formula length times width again area 2 is going to be equal to a length of 4 and this width here is going to be 3 plus 2 which is 5 so it's going to be 4 times 5 so area 2 is going to be equal to 20 square inches area 3 is a triangle whose formula is 1 half the base times the height so area 3 is going to be equal to 1 half the base of the triangle is 5 the height of the triangle here is going to be 3. So area 3 is going to be equal to 1 half of 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 1 half of that would be 7.5. Those are square inches. We then need to find the total area. And to find the total area, we have to add. So I write something like this, where we would write total area is equal to area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. So the total, total area is going to be equal to 6 plus 20 plus 7.5. That's going to give you, what's that, 13 and a half and 20. It's going to be 33 and one half and that would be what square inches for the total area let's try our next example I want to find the area of this figure here looks like a triangle and a trapezoid which we could find the area of the triangle and the area of the trapezoid and add them together but if you notice we can decompose this figure I'm sorry not decompose we can compose it if I take this piece here and I bring this piece flip it around and put it here it would look something like this right and let's just erase this 
right, make this piece disappear now, right, that disappears, and what's left is a rectangle. The rectangle would have a length of 4 and 4, which is 8, and a height of 2. So the area is going to be equal to length times width. Area is going to be equal to a length of 8, a width of 2. So my area is going to be equal to 16, and those are square meters. All right, we circle our box, that answer. All right, we look at the next page. Uh, once again, we have a figure here. Looks like we have a rectangular piece here, a rectangular piece here, and I have a square piece here. Now we could find the area of this rectangular piece, area of this rectangular piece, and the area of the square, add everything together. But, once again, I can take this piece here, put it here, and that would look something like that. All right? This piece would now disappear. Let's see, let's make that disappear. All right, so I'm going to make this disappear. All right, and now I have, once again, composed a figure by moving this piece here, here. So I write my formula. Area is going to be equal to length times width. Area is going to be equal to a length of 6. My width is 5. So it's going to be 6 times 5. So my area is going to be equal to 30 square inches. All right. A lot easier to do that problem if we recognize that we can compose the figure and move that piece around. But let's pretend for a second, right? It's important to prove this point. Let's pretend for a second we were not able to compose it. Okay? Let's pretend for a second all we see is the three shapes. Right? So we would label area one, oops, area one, area two, and area three. All right? I would label that and then let me start this in red. Area 1 is going to be equal to length times width. Area 1 is going to be equal to 3 times 2. Area 1 is equal to 3 times 2. So area 1 is equal to 6. Those are square inches. Right? Area 2 is equal to length times width. Area 2 is going to be equal to well, let's see. If this is 2 and this is 6, it means from here to here is 4, right? And we know that that's uh, 3 and 2 is 5. So it's going to be 4 times 5. 4 times 5. So area 2 is going to be equal to 20 square inches. Area 3, scroll down, area 3 is a square. So the formula is going to be S squared which is equal to 2 squared, right, which is 4 square inches. The total area, total area is going to be equal to 6 plus 20 plus 4, 6 plus 20 plus 4, which is 30 square inches. Look at all of that work that we had to do if we don't recognize that we can compose it. We could do the same problem, decomposing the figure into three separate shapes. I get an area of 30 square inches, or I can go back to my original problem where we composed by moving this piece here, and I get 30 square inches. Right? Which way looks like it's easier? Obviously, if we compose the figure, it saves us a ton of work. Now, is everyone going to recognize that they can compose a figure? No, but understand that if you're careful with your math, you can use either method. You can decompose or you can compose to find the area. Okay, let's take a look at our next one. We have this figure here. Uh, I don't see anywhere where I can compose, so I'm going to have to decompose this. Let's call it area 1, area 2, area 3. Area 1 is going to be equal to length times width. So area 1 is going to be equal to length of 4, width of 7, 
So that's going to be 4 times 7. Area 1 is going to be 28. Those are square meters. Area 2 is going to be equal to S squared because it's a square. So area 2 is going to be equal to 2, the length of the side, square. So area 2 is going to be equal to 4 square meters. Area 3 is, let's see, a square as well. Area 3 is going to be equal to S squared. Area 3 is going to be equal to 3 squared. So area 3 is going to be equal to 9 Oops, square meters. My total area total area is going to be equal to 28 plus 4 plus 9 28 plus 4 plus 9 so that's going to be 28 plus 13 so that's 28 38 that's going to be 41 uh, what are those square meters for the area so the area is equal to 41 square meters we'll circle or box that answer okay we have some other problems that you may want to try on your own. You can compose, uh, you can decompose, try these on, on your own. But we'll do these together. Okay, let's start with problem six. Problem six is a parallelogram. Parallelogram is going to be equal to the base times the height. Remember, your base and your height have to be perpendicular segments. So I have to use the 6 and I have to use the 4.2. The 5 inches is what's called the distractor. That has nothing to do with the area. You would need it to find the perimeter, but for the area, it's not necessary. It's called extraneous information and or a distractor. It is meant to um, you know, cause you to make a mistake. You have to understand that your base and your height are the perpendicular segments. So I write my formula. Area is equal to base times height area is going to be equal to a base of 6 you have a height of 4.2 area is going to be equal to 6 times 4.2 and that's going to be what uh, 6 times 4 is 24 6 times 0.2 is 1.2 so that I believe that's going to be 25.2 and those are square inches for the area of the uh, parallelogram let's try problem number seven problem seven it looks like uh, two shapes here we have the parallelogram I will call this right well let me trace it so you know what we're talking about here here's the parallelogram I'm gonna call that figure one and then the triangle is going to be figure two I'm gonna have to add them together to find the area area one is my parallelogram so that's going to be base times height my base is 15 my heights gonna be seven so for area one that's going to be equal to just erase that so we can see that a little better erase that so area one is going to be equal to the base of 15 height of 7 oops show that again base of 15 height of 7 so area one is going to be equal to 15 times 7 it's going to be 70 and 35 so it's 105 those are square inches area 2 is going to be equal to the area of a triangle so that's one half base times height area two is going to be equal to one half your base is going to be uh, let's see 15 your height is going to be seven one half of 15 times seven scroll down so area two is going to be equal to well one half of 15 times seven well, we know that 15 times 7 is 105. Half of 105 would be what? 52.5. So that's 52.5. And those are square inches. So your total area, write it down here. Your total area, total area is going to be equal to area 1, which is 105, plus area 2, which is 52.5. So that's going to be 105 plus 52.5, which is going to be 157.5. Those are square inches. All right. Then our last example here. Let's uh, change colors, maybe blue. All right. 
Let's look at our last example. What shapes do we have here? Looks like we have a triangle, a rectangle, and a rectangle. And uh, so I'm going to call that area one, area two, area three. All right, this is problem eight. Area one is a rectangle, so that's going to be length times width. Area one is going to be equal to, what's that, three times two? Three times two. Area one is going to be equal to six, and those are square meters. Area two is going to be equal to one half base times height. Area two is going to be equal to one half. Well, it looks like your base is two, and your height here is going to be three. So one half of two times three. So area two is going to be one half of six. It's going to be three square meters. Then we have area three, I'm running out of room. Let's extend it. I'm scrolling back up so I can see it. All right, area three is going to be equal to. Area three is going to be equal to length times width because it's a rectangle. So that's going to be 2.4 times 3.6. Right, area three is going to be equal to 2.4 times 3.6. And what's 2.4 times 3.6? Come over here, 3.6, 2.4, 4 times 6 is 24, 4 carry the 2, 4 times 3 is 12, and 2 is 14, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 carry the 1, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 is 7, we're going to add, that's going to be 4, 6, and that's 8, 2 decimal places, so area 3 is going to be equal to 8.64. Your total area for that figure, total area is going to be equal to the 6 plus the 3 plus the 8.64. 6 plus 3 plus 8.64, which is going to be equal to, what's that, 9 and 8 is 17. 17.64, and those are, what, square meters. Meters squared, it's supposed to be 6.4. Right, there's our area. Square meters. All right. There are other types of problems where, let's see, where we have to find the area of a shaded region. And those problems are not very difficult. It's where we simply have to uh, subtract one area from another. So I'm going to call the whole entire rect uh, parallelogram area one. And this little rectangle in here, uh, area two all right area one is equal to base times height area one is going to be equal to what's that ten times seven ten times seven so area one is equal to seventy and these are square centimeters area two is simply three times two three times two so area 2 is equal to 6 square centimeters. We want to subtract the smaller area from the larger area. So we would write shaded area. Shaded area is equal to 70 minus 6. 70 minus 6, which is going to be 64. And these are square centimeters. All right. I'm going to skip... Uh, Let's see, eh, I guess we'll do it, why not? Let's see, I want to find the area of the entire parallelogram and then subtract the area of the smaller parallelogram. Call it area one, call it area two. Area one is going to be equal to eight times 12, right? Base times height. Area one is going to be equal to eight times 12, eight times 12. So area one is gonna be equal to 96. These are square meters. Area two is equal to, what's that, six times four? Six times four. So area two is equal to 24 square meters. Shaded area, 
shaded area is going to be equal to 96 minus 24 96 minus 24 which is going to be 72 these are square meters let's try the next one call this area 1 call it area 2 area 1 is equal to base times height area 1 is going to be equal to your base is 12 your height is going to be measured outside the figure this time it's going to be 12 as well so area 1 is going to be equal to 144 these are square feet area 2 is going to be equal to what's that 6 times 8 6 times 8 so area 2 is going to be equal to 48 these are square feet shaded area we have to subtract to find that shaded area so the shaded area is going to be 144 minus 48 144 minus 48 which is going to be 96 square feet alright our last problem right, which I think is a pretty cool question you're given the total area right that total area is 106 176 square feet we want to find the measurement of this piece here right what is the length of X well we have a couple steps involved here first thing we want to do is we want to subtract the area of this rectangle all right from the total area that's the first step so let's find the area of that rectangle we'll call it area 1 area 1 is going to be equal to 16 times 8 all right 16 times 8 so area 1 is going to be equal to what's that 80 and 48 so that's 128 those are square feet I want to subtract that from the 176 so 176 minus 128 that's going to give me what 6 16 that's 8 that's 4 it's going to give me 48 square feet now what does that 48 square feet represent well that 48 square feet represents the area of right this rectangular piece that I'm drawing right this entire rectangular piece because if I take this piece and bring it over here right it creates a rectangle so let's just pretend this is gone for a second and I created this rectangle here well the area of that rectangle is equivalent to 48 square feet so 8 times what gives us 48 well 48 divided by the 8 means that that length has to be 6 so 6 feet is what X is equal to alright that's our lesson today we spent a lot of time using different formulas it's just important that we use parentheses to show our substitution let's write our formulas when we're dealing with area we write our answer in square units and let's always circle or box our answers alright I hope that that was helpful